Hey everybody, welcome back to Wine Up TV. On today's show, we have Ecolio Dumont, who is the area manager USA Canada for Akaval Fetter. I'm telling for it. Yes, yeah, do, do, do that, man. <laughs> correct, correct my Spanish. Anything you want, that's okay. From Bodega Mendocina, Mendoza, Argentina. We'll be back in a minute. I was just at an, an amazing tasting uh, this afternoon with a distributor, and you guys import your wines from Argentina, and a couple of these wines just kind of blew me away, and I kind of pulled Eclio aside, I said, hey, do you want to go do a show? And he looked at me, he goes, show? I said, yeah, come on. So here he, here he is sitting right here. Eclio, tell me a little bit about you and your involvement with this wine label. Well... Uh, I started uh, with wine uh, three years ago. Uh, I never worked before with wine. I just uh, always loved it. Before always been I a drinker, could, right? Before I could <laughs> legally drink it, I drink it, so it's like, shh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had a, a friend that used to work in the wine business industry, so he was always around, traveling, having some good wine. So I sure. said, why I cannot do the same? Working with someone that you really like, you know? Absolutely. Like, like you do with the really, really nice store you have here. So it's basically the same. And, uh, well, I started first in another winery, then moved into a Chabal Ferrer. Uh, two months ago, I'm the new guy, I'm brand new, so I okay. have to pay the drinks. Uh, carry the luggage, you know, everything. <laughs> He's buying drinks later. I heard him. It's yeah. on film. He can't change it. Okay, the two wines we're going to talk about. Now, was it the Wine Spectator or Wine and Two? Who loves you guys? There's actually a good I mean, relationship a there going on, fortunately. Yeah, yeah. We're, wines, we're just a uh, winery from 11 years ago. The project started back in 95. Okay. Uh, the first vintage was in 99 with our uh, Finca Altamira, which is the one we're going to try uh, Chimera. today. Chimera. Uh, yeah, and Chimera, we, we, we see our wines in three different ways. The first one, or the, the original one, were all, was this single vineyard here, that then came another two called uh, Finca Mirador and Finca Bella Vista. Okay. Uh, well, then we created Chimera, which is a blended. And the last one uh, that came to life is called Malbec Mendoza. We are a winery focused 100% on Malbec. So first one, a single vineyards, expression of the soil, of the terroir. This Chimera that we're going to try right now is a blended Bordeaux-style wine with Malbec, 40%, then Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, and for the first year, Petit Verdot. Uh, that is a traditional Bordeaux blend. That is, that is a exactly, Bordeaux blend. Exactly. So yeah. only that perhaps four times... Uh, not so expensive. This same quality of wine, perhaps, it would be like around one hundred and forty dollars a bottle. Sure. And uh, retail, we're talking about around uh, forty dollars. Okay. So, tell me, since you grew up down in South America, yeah, the two thousand eight vintage it's supposed to be a very good vintage down there. Yeah, two thousand and six was great. Yeah, it was great. Actually, uh, one of the the best wine of this one was two thousand and six. Okay, and these them. these grapes are grown at what altitude? Oh, we are we're, between we're gonna... 2,000 and 3,500 feet. Okay, I like it. You had to do the conversion because we're in America. We don't say meters down here, do yeah, we? Yeah, I know. I've learned it for you guys. You know? <laughs> I know, huh? <laughs> Everything's on the back for us Americans. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about this wine. What I liked about this at the tasting was the balance oh, that yeah. it had and just the nose in general. Mm. Well, in the, in the tasting, I, we got the chance to decant them like two times, but... What's the retail on this bottle of wine? It's about 40. 40 bucks a bottle. That's great. That's a little bit higher than the sweet spot. Americans, we like them. $30, I think, at the top, the top of the sweet spot now here in America. $40, this is a good hand sell. This needs some time. It still has got a yeah. it's huge. It's the tannin structure. It's wine. you got the blueberries, the blackberries. It's got a lot, some tar. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a lot going on. Good tannins. Yeah. They could live about, I think, 15, 20 years, this, 15 to be, to be sure. But yeah, it's actually a lot of concentration. We are talking about a really, really low yields. Just to give you an idea, a regular producer of Mendoza can make between four or five bottles per plant. Here we're doing one plant, uh, one bottle with two plants. 
Wow, that so, is. And in the single vineyard, three plants, one bottle. So it's actually That's a it. lot of concentration. Okay, so the production on this, this is 3,000 cases, 12 bottle cases. Yeah. So it's about 36,000 bottles. Great. Now, the next wine we're going to have, I was just noticing this in the back. This is 825 cases, 12 bottles. So it's about a third yeah. of this production. And this is the uh, Finca Altamira 2008 La Consulta Mendoza. So yeah. Is this 100%? Malbec? 100% oh, Malbec. Look at that color. But before entering oh, this one, I'm going to tell you, I want to tell you a story about yeah. Chimera. Stories are great. Yeah. Let's hear them. Chimera uh, mm -hmm. is named after the Greek beast of the mythology that had different parts of animals, like head of a lion. You can call me that. Of, uh, yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see your suits back there. Well, you know, it's <laughs> between you and me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, different parts of animals for the perfect beast. Here we're talking about different grapes trying to achieve a perfect wine. It also had a different connotation through time, like in the times of, of, uh, of uh, Catholicism, around the, the, the medieval times, mm -hmm. it was used to be like the, the, the fight between evil uh, and good, with Chimera being the bad guy, and uh, Belero Fonte, that was the good guy that killed the monster, that mythical monster. But then, in, with the Renaissance, came with the times of new thinking and new, new, new ideas, of, of, of history, of times, Chimera became like, like an illusion, like a utopia, like something that it doesn't exist, but you would like to achieve. Okay. So that's what we try to, to make with this name, with this wine, that uh, according to our winemaker has no roof. Because when no you blend wines, you can make always something almost perfect. There you go. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to get a perfect 100% varietal. We never, said, we never said perfection. Yeah. Perfection is like impossible, you know? It is. You know, it's hard to, it's like a single Cabernet or a single Merlot's. I like a little bit blended in to soften one aspect or another of the wines. Um, this one has a little bit of everything. It has great aging potential. Just the, it lays. I make it still taste the yeah, wine in my mouth. It. It's great. Let's talk a little bit about the next wine. Okay, uh, you're on. You're on stage. Go ahead. Come on. Sell this wine. And this is this. This one here is retail. Uh, around a hundred. But a hundred dollars a bottle. Hundred, hundred and ten. Wine Spectator gave this a ninety-eight points. Two thousand and three vintage, and this one is ninety-six points. Ninety-six pointer. Yeah. That's a classic wine. It's a classic. It is definitely classic. The nose a little restrained. It's got a little dustiness to it. I just you know these wines do need a little decanting. Yeah. And we just open them up. You know. We decanted it two times back in the tasting with the venturi and the decanter one, and then back into the bottle just to simulate. We recommend to do it like three hours earlier. Before God. drinking it and putting it, chilling that bit down, perhaps the fridge. You know. We're Americans. We don't have three hours. We're very impatient yeah, people. Yeah, I know, guys. We want to I drink know. it now, 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 now. We don't want to That's wait. That's why you have the Venturi, you know. You yeah, put it there. absolutely. Why it's really great. This is nice. So this is um, this Mendoza out at 3,400 feet, uh, own rooted uh, grapevines. Yeah. 80 year old, old, 80 year old vineyards. Yeah, this is a, 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 a trip in time, is this? Three quarters of a ton per acre, yeah. which is nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. Holy moly, and primary fermentation was performed, small tanks, and went ML, um, new French oak, 15 months, yeah. barrel age. I, this I, wine I have is. a great story to tell you about this wine. Because I can't it's wait. The first one of our winery. Uh, well, our winery, as I told you, the project began in the year 95, 1995. Uh, our winemaker is Italian, uh, he's called Roberto Cipreso, and he came right from Italy for the first time in Argentina, just uh, when he received the call from some friends, or, or who are the owners of the winery, and uh, he, they told him, okay, come, back to, come down to Argentina, go make a trip, choose a land, and do your wine. Just like that. Just like that. And so the guy arrived to, to Argentina, grabbed a 4x4, four four, a pickup truck, you know, and started driving around Mendoza. Just like, what can I do? So, doing around, going around, going around, finally he arrives to a place where the, where the, the, the vines were almost dying, or oh, the, the grass was so high, there was a pig eating the vines there, mm -hmm. at the house of a, of a drunk guy that... I barely take care of that land, but the good thing about the vines is that the vines quite get along by their own very well. So you, if you don't take care about them, they go their way, they find a way, but they will stay alive somehow. And uh, well, he stepped down for the for the for the track, tried the grape, and his face was like, "My that was God, it. 
the grape was like something he could say. Huge wine. He grabbed the cell phone, called one of the, right, the owners and said, Santiago, Santiago Chaval, who is a, one of the owners, one is a Chaval Ferrer, and said, Santiago, you, you have to buy this property, but please don't come and look at it because if you look at it, you won't buy it. It was a mess. Sure. But then they bought it, they started making other things, and the, the first wine, 1999, was great. It was the, the beginning of a story. You know, it's a hundred dollars a bottle. It's definitely a special occasion wine, unless you unless you know you want to build a cellar, you want to you know six pack of this in there. I think what's nice about wines of this caliber, you drink one every year or every other every eighteen months, kind of keep a little log and see how it's drinking. When you think it's peaking, go ahead and finish it. Yeah. It's got tannin structure. It's got fruit. It has it has everything that I look for in a wine. Um, it's just delicious, absolutely. It's a new label to me. I never even heard about you guys before this tasting. It's great. We are young, just 11 years. My friend, you are the area manager USA and Canada. Yeah, I'm going to be around a lot, so whatever next, you need. Next time you're still. in town, why don't you bring a couple of different wines? Okay. And we'll sit down and we'll do a couple of different things, you know, because every year is a different vintage. Absolutely. And my peeps really kind of want great wines, and, and these definitely deliver. I want to thank you, man. Iglio, well, my pleasure, yeah. buddy. My, pleasure, gonna, right? my new BFF on Facebook right here. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in a while. Thanks.